Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to work out Pearson's correlation coefficient using Excel. Now if you're doing statistics for your um, project then you have to do what's called a further process and that means you can't just use your calculator to work out all of the statistics. You've got to choose something that you're going to work out by hand. Now we say by hand, it doesn't mean you've got to add them all up you know, using arithmetic. You can use a normal calculator and you can use Excel to help you. So I'm going to show you how to do it in Excel because Excel is very good at organising a lot of data. You can see here I've got a column of X values and a column of Y values and all together if we scroll down we've got 60 pairs of values. So quite difficult to do even on a, a um, graphics calculator to put that many um, individual entries in. So quite a good idea to use Excel. So let's have a look at how we might do that. Before we start though, Excel kindly does give us a formula to work out R. So it's just Pearson. So you, you type equals so that you get the formula bar starting. Pearson, you can see how it comes up as well. It says it returns the Pearson product moment correlation coefficient R. And we're going to need two arrays. So that just means two columns. So all I'm going to do is color this one in in all the way down to the bottom, which is there. And then I do a comma, and then coming back up to the top, I'm gonna to color in this one all the way down as well. And there it is, and then close your brackets. So in this particular case, according to Excel, our correlation coefficient is 0.75. All right, so that's what we're aiming for. I should have actually done that in a different cell, so I'm just going to move it up. Um, when we're copying it, I want it to paste up. It's moved everything. Yes, it has. Okay, so there's, that's what we're aiming for, that R there. All right, let's have a look at this monstrosity here. This is how we're going to do it. Remember that this sigma here means sum. This X with the bar on top is the mean. Of the x's and this is the mean of the y's. So we've got quite a bit of work to do to be able to work this out by hand. First thing I'm going to do is work out the mean okay? because that will be useful to me. So right down the bottom underneath the x's I'm going to type in equals average and then I'm going to grab that whole column so from A2 all the way down. Keep going just to there, close your brackets. So there's the mean of the x's. And actually I can just copy that straight across and it will give me the mean of the y's. So it's going to change the formula to b. You can see that up here. It's changed to the b column. All right, so there's both of our means there. Okay, so that's good. Now, the first thing we want to do is this part here, this x minus x bar. So in each case, I'm going to do equals, I'm going to do 8, or A2 actually, take away the mean that I just worked out. So that's all the way down here, and I'm going to press equals and it's going to come back up. Now, if I copy this down, it's not going to work, because it's going to move, Have a, just have a look at that A64 there. What happens when I move down A65, A66, A67? It's moving this particular cell all the way down. So instead of doing A63, which is our mean, it's doing A64 and then A65. There's a way of changing that and making that not happen. So instead of A63, I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of the A and then a dollar sign in front of the 63, and that will make that an absolute cell reference, so it won't move. This other one, this A2, will move. It'll go down to A3, A4, which is what we want, but we don't want that mean to move. The other way to do that, if you don't want to put use the dollar signs, is to actually put the physical number in, which was, what is that, 9.925. That's another way of doing it. Anyway, we've done with the dollar signs now, so I'm going to copy this all the way down. there and that gives us all of 
um, these axes take away the mean in every case. All right. So you can see how that A63 is not moving now, which is pretty good. That's what we wanted. All right, so that gives us, I'm actually going to move this now. Just to change my mind. I need to type a heading X minus the mean. Okay, now we also need Y minus the mean, don't we? Let's have a look at this over here. What happens if we copy this across? Let's have a look what it will do. Naturally, it's still going to do A63 but it has moved across to the B. So that's good. We don't want X's mean though. We want Y's mean. Let's have a look where that's sitting. It's sitting here in B63. So all we need to do is change this to a B. Okay, let's copy them all the way down. do this all the merge cells need to be the same size okay fair enough look at that I've got some things there all right I should do it now it's because I deleted things all right now it's happy um, let's just do a couple to check so b2 minus b63 b3 minus b63 yep that's working so that's that part there okay what's this top line mean this means multiply this number by this one and then add them all together. Okay, so this next line is going to be the product of the two. So we're going to go equals this one, star, because that's multiply in Excel, enter, and we're going to copy all of that all the way down. And we wanted the sum of that, didn't we? So, we can probably just auto sum it, E2 to E62, yep, that'll do it. So there's our numerator, just there. So I'm just going to put in, draw a little arrow. Okay, and this is the numerator. Oops, so let's spell it right, numerator. Okay, we're getting there. What else do we need? Okay, the denominator has got all of the x minus means squared and added together, and then all of the y minus means squared and added together. Okay, we can do that. So this next one's going to be the x minus means squared. So x minus mean squared. I'm just going to do a normal two. I'll have to know what that means. So I'm just going to grab this guy here and square it. Equals C2 here squared to the power of 2. So just have a look what I did there. See that it's a little arrow that goes up. It's above the 6. So you do shift 6 and then the 2. And that's going to square it. Okay, we want all of those for every single pair of values. Oh, here we go again. I might have this a couple of times, so I'm just going to go quickly and unmerge them. Where else is that? That's it. So let's copy it down. Good. Um, next one is the y minus y, me y minus means all squared. Can we copy that? Of course, we don't really need to. Let's just do it again. So let's grab the y minus means to the power of 2. Copy it all the way down. And let's go back up to the formula. What do we need now? We need the sum of those and the sum of those. So we're just going to sum those two columns here. So we can auto sum it. Just check always that it goes all the way up the top. It does. F2. There's the sum of that. And auto sum this one. No, look what it's done. It's gone sideways. That's stupid, isn't it? I wonder if I can copy it across. Yep. Let's have a look and just check G2 to G62. All right, so that's our denominator 
that bit there and that bit there, those two sums have got to be multiplied together and then we've got to do the square root of them. We're going to do that in one go, if that doesn't alarm you. So I'm going to do equals square root, which is SQRT, brackets, this guy times this guy. Close the brackets, enter. And that's our denominator. This one here is our denominator. So let's type that in. Therefore, R is going to be equal to, hmm, let's just do it over here. It's going to be equal to our numerator divided by our denominator. Now, of course, I deleted that thing before, remember? Let's do R down here equals Pearson, just so we can check it, and then copy all of that all don't walk the way down. Sometimes it's easier just to type this in, you know. B2 to B61, close the brackets. Um, let's compare those two numbers. 0 0.75179013, and here we've got it to six decimal places, which is good. So when you're writing this up, you can copy this and, you know, make format it nicely so that it looks good and you can put it actually in your project along with the formula and how you explain how you worked it out. Okay, that's it. Thank you.